Hello and welcome to SCAN's eCampus. SCAN's eCampus is a gold approved learning partner of ACCA. On this channel, we bring you demo videos of different courses available at SCAN's eCampus. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notifications of additional videos and hit the like button. In this video, we're going to cover the elements of quality control. There are two relevant standards which apply. ISQC1 provides guidance on the overall quality control systems that should be implemented by an audit firm. So these will apply to systems at the firm level. Then there's quality control and an individual audit, which is covered by ISA 220. This is where we'll talk about the quality control procedures that should be applied by the engagement team in individual audit of historical financial information. Please understand that these elements will need to be applied to the scenario in the AAA exam. So if we start off with the first element, there's leadership responsibility for quality. For an individual audit, that's the engagement partner who's going to be responsible for making sure quality is not compromised and quality control procedures are followed. At the firm level, there needs to be a senior person who's given this responsibility. He or she is going to be responsible for making sure there's a culture focused on quality. Relevant policies are followed. Um, there's awareness about the importance of quality and how it needs to be implemented. Proper communication channels have been established throughout the team, etc., etc. The second element is very simple. You've done this already. Ethical requirement basically means, be it audit or any other assignment, they have to make sure the relevant team members from the partner to the junior most member that the code of ethics is basically followed. So the fundamental principles are followed. Any threats are safeguarded appropriately. Acceptance or continuous of a client is the third element. Now, ISQC1 Southwater firm must consider and document in relation to accepting or continuing an audit engagement or any other engagement. Examples of factors you need to consider include integrity of the client, whether the firm is competent to do the work, whether the firm meets the ethical requirements in relation to work, whether customer due diligence and know your client procedures have been covered, if there's any conflict of interest between existing clients, um, whether we have the relevant resources in times of staff available, time, uh, time etc. So all of that needs to be considered before we accept a new client or continue an engagement. These will be covered in a separate video as well. The third element is very self-explanatory, HR policies. Now, if we talk about an individual audit, it's the engagement partner who has to make sure that not only himself, but the other team members have the required skills and time to conduct the audit. So obviously, if you're doing your audit in a hurry or if you're not competent enough to perform that particular audit because of its specialist nature, then quality is going to be compromised. So it's the partner's responsibility to make sure that all team members, including himself, have the relevant expertise. For the firm, it's slightly a wider scale. So at the firm level, you need to have proper policies in place for recruiting staff, for evaluating their performance, for their promotion, etc., etc. Engagement performance is possibly one of the most commonly tested areas and obviously linked to the scenario. So there are various elements you need to keep in mind. The bullets that you see on the screen are very important because these are the ones that you'll have to pick up from the scenario and explain how a certain element has been compromised. If we start off with direction, this is set by the engagement partner at the planning stage. This is when the engagement partner is going to assign responsibilities to the team based on the experience and skills. He's going to communicate the purpose of work to be done on each area. An initial audit approach is going to be decided. Everyone's going to sit together and discuss areas which are susceptible to fraud and error. So risks are going to be discussed and an approach decided accordingly. And the team will be told how to deal with problems as they arise. In the context of the AAA exam, if at the planning stage, the engagement partner was not there, then you can pick up in terms of an evaluation of quality control and say direction was not set and therefore all these elements would not have been covered. The second element is supervision. Now, again, the main responsibility of supervision lies with the engagement partner 
and this is not a one-off process. Please understand that supervision needs to be continuous. This is when the person who is doing the supervision has to keep track of the progress of the audit engagement so that they can make sure the audit timetable is met. They need to make sure that the manager and the partner are kept updated of the progress of work. They'll be making sure that the work is done according to the planned approach. The competence and capabilities of individual members of the team have to be considered, including whether they have the sufficient time to carry out the work, whether they understand their instructions, whether the work is being carried out in accordance with the planned approach decided at the direction stage, etc., etc. The supervisor will also ensure important matters are communicated to seniors. He will evaluate if the audit approach that was initially decided needs to be modified. So based on any significant matters that may arise during the audit and they will see if consultation is needed. So when, when we use the word consultation, that brings us to the next element. This is simply saying that if you feel that you're not sure about the matter or if you don't have the expertise about that matter, then get expert from either within or outside the firm. So you should get consultations from outside or within the firm or outside the team on areas which are difficult, contentious. So any area that you feel you're struggling with, do not compromise on quality. You need to get consultations from experts. Now, review is again a very commonly tested element of quality control. We need to make sure that we understand that review of the work has to be hierarchical. This basically means that a junior person's work is going to be reviewed by the senior, seniors work by the manager, managers by the partner. So when we talk about review, the reviewer has to consider that whether the work has been done in accordance with professional standards and other regulatory requirements, and they need to make sure that the work performed supports the conclusions that have been reached and everything has been documented properly. So if the conclusion is sales are overstated, the review will check whether there's appropriate work or appropriate evidence that has been gathered to support this conclusion. So in order to sort of understand as a checklist, remember, review has to be done throughout the audit. This is not a one-off process. They're making sure work is done according to relevant standards and regulatory requirements. The reviewer is going to check whether the objective of work has been achieved they have to make sure that conclusions are supported by sufficient appropriate evidence and the review has to be done by the engagement partner. Please understand the partner does not need to review all audit documentation, but only a quick look at the working papers should indicate the areas of risk or critical judgment that need more input really. So it's the managers or the supervisors who would be doing the hierarchical review. The engagement partner has to go through the problematic areas to make sure everything is in order. If needed, you could get an engagement quality control reviewer as well. Please remember, this is a term from your earlier studies that this is someone other than the engagement partner. The quality control reviewer will review significant judgments. So sort of getting feedback on whether they're on the right track or this is an area that the engagement partner feels that he needs input on from another independent partner. He's also going to evaluate conclusions reached in making the audit report and he's going to make sure that experts were consulted wherever there was a need. The last element of engagement performance is documentation. So we have to make sure that all relevant documentations and working papers are maintained and confidentiality is taken care of. Remember, audit firms need to maintain their working papers for a minimum of five years. This varies from country to country. It's five to seven years for most countries across the world. The last element of quality control is monitoring. The firm has to make sure that quality control procedures are adequate and complied with. They also need to retain evidence about relevance, adequacy, and effectiveness of quality control procedures and of the corrective actions taken. So you can't simply say, oh, yes, we have quality control. You need to have evidence that it is actually being followed and corrective actions were taken wherever there was a need. Just to wrap up, please understand there's no point in rote learning these elements. 
Wherever the requirement says you have to discuss the quality control implications, you'll pick up the words from the scenario and link them to the element which has not been performed properly. If you like this video, visit our website www.scansecampus.com to purchase the complete course at affordable prices. Register today at no cost and access our free 10-day trial.